well. Hey, funny seeing you here at a Stoneworks video. Haha. <laughs> When a world builder clicks on a YouTube video, they may be hoping for a few things. History, geography, mythology, and interlinked global systems. Well, happy day, cause today at Stoneworks we've got all that. Be sure to check out the description for the world building Discord, Patreon, and Minecraft server. And a quick shout out to my Monsa Musa patrons out there. Kenny Vetter, the dope bro. Rift Ranger, the Chad Jupiter Optimus Maximus. Rift Ranger, message me and I'll literally add you as a god in my world building project. Kowit, who is a Minecraft legend. Ezra Baptist, Zachary Brosnan Ortiz, Travis, probably from Astro World. Josh Hupp, probably from Connecticut or something. Ben McFarlane, and Shadow Eleven, the OG. Back to the video. In the Hebrew Bible, there's a little-known story known as Noah's Ark. The monotheistic god Yahweh comes down and tells Noah that he's gonna make a huge flood because he fucked up on making the first batch of humans. So, Noah builds a giant boat to save his family and all the animals so God doesn't have to start over from scratch. The flood comes down, everyone dies, and everyone's happy with the rainbow in the sky. While this story is definitely Hebrew, one god, mankind destroyed for sin, Noah is like 500 years old, the original tale comes from across the Fertile Crescent in ancient Mesopotamia. The even older epic of Gilgamesh tells a story where another guy, Utnapishtim, does basically the same thing as Noah. Now Mesopotamian agricultural civilization grew on the banks of two dank rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates. And these rivers would flood erratically and violently, destroying towns, killing people, bringing famine, and upsetting the social hierarchy. Now, many civilizations in world history, from the Americas to Africa to the Middle East to China, experience catastrophic floods. And likewise, there are many myths of massive inundations of water that wrecked the entire world and changed everything. I mean, the mythological first emperor of China was an engineer who tamed the flooding Yellow River, so these flood myths are obviously pretty big deals. That being said, these worldwide flood myths are aggrandized stories, although the Mesopotamian one possibly recounts a particularly massive flood in the 3000s BCE. But in the flood myth, the world floods in the same way that the Mesopotamian rivers do. There are really, really big storms, and the river level rises until the waters sweep away their crops and break down their houses. But in reality, these floods were not worldwide. They weren't even multinational beyond the scope of Mesopotamia. Every place would experience their own localized floods, but they could relate to and adopt these tales of epic floods of biblical proportions. But there is one historical story of flooding that I think takes the cake in its scope and environmental impact. It created a whole new biome, although it's not in Minecraft yet, so it doesn't count. When this flood happened, an entire corner of Washington state, 30,000 square miles, would be covered in rushing water. It wasn't caused by an angry god, though, but ice. You see, 16,000 years ago in North America, the cold Rocky Mountains built up snow that would not melt. The snow compressed in on itself and created big blocks of packed ice, glaciers. I talk more about glaciers in this video. Eventually, the ice formed more and more southward up on the mountains. But the presence of such a huge mass of ice changed the mountainous landscape. Usually, there were rivers that started in the mountains and flowed down the valleys, through Washington, and into the Pacific Ocean. But now, the valleys were all blocked up by the ice. So like with a beaver dam, the river grew wider and wider until the whole valley between the Bitterroot Mountains and the Rocky Mountains was submerged under a massive glacial lake. Lake Missoula, home of the minor league Montana Grizzlies. Lake Missoula existed up in the Ice Age Mountains for more than 2,000 years. The melting from the surrounding glaciers would feed the lake, and it would end up growing to a surface area of nearly 3,000 square miles. I'd love to imagine what creatures could evolve in this dark, rocky, icy mountain lake. 
Although 2,000 years isn't quite enough time to evolve something like this, but it's still fun to think about. I'm working on something in my world building project that has a lake like this, so let me know any ideas you'd have for what could evolve in Lake Missoula. As the glacial lake grew, so did the downcurrent pressure exerted on that ice dam. It's thought that humans had settled in the Americas 30 to 40,000 years ago, so Native American tribes would have been firmly settled in the diverse lands of Pacifica. There'd be many Ice Age settlements and camps along the big productive valley rivers. They were good for fishing, traveling, and trading after all. So you can't blame someone for not knowing that, say, 200 miles upstream, that river would soon turn into a hellish wall of water. The ice dam broke, and Lake Missoula poured out of the mountains like blood from an open heart wound on a hyperactive hemophiliac five-year-old. The water flooded down the valley of eastern Washington, pouring in all directions and rushing to the lower lands. It must have sheared the trees, topsoil, and rock off of the surface of the valley, and it took all of this and hurled it downstream at those unlucky souls on the riverbanks. Through here, where the water rushed down, a unique biome was created, where the floods pushed away the fertile soil and carved out numerous round plateaus that jut sharply out of the land. The rock cliffs are striped by the floodwaters, and there are large boulders and gravel banks across the landscape. The channeled scablands, as they're called, could so easily be made into a unique fantasy biome simply with a color change to the rocks, a little bit of vegetation, and some fantasy beasties. For some reason, I feel like the Morrowind dinosaurs fit really nicely here. This landscape is surrounded by mountains, so as the lake finished draining, the waters would pool up in the scabland and create the temporary Lake Lewis. There was only one outlet though, the Wallula Gap, so it took a while for Lake Lewis to drain out. With all of this, in the channeled scablands, you can find big lake ripples on the ground, and you can even see the ancient shorelines on the hills. On a world building level, this shit is dope. And hot damn if it doesn't give a lot of good world building inspiration. Yes, this is totally a biblical sized flood of North America, especially since there were several other places beyond the Wallula Gap that would be flooded out. These places by coastal Washington are much more rainy and much more fertile than the inland where the scab lands are. So you can bet that there would be a lot of people that the flood would kill or displace. On a human level, this event would have been so destructive and sad that I get a charity tax break just from talking about it. The steep cliffs of the plateaus and the barren soil are a testament to just how powerful water can be. It turned an arid landscape into a unique patch of temperate drylands that are full of lakes, rivers, canyons, cliffs, and plateaus. Oh, I just got a message from my research friend. Oh shit. This flood happened more than 40 times. 